The journey of a hero is about the courage to seek the depths, the image of creative rebirth, the eternal cycle of change within them, the uncanny discovery that the seeker is the mystery which the seeker seeks to know. I'm Dismas Makanda. Makanda is my surname. My middle name is uh, Otieka. Christ's other ministry is, um, is a registered uh, church under the Society's Act, which operates in Kenya, about 25, I think 26 uh, assemblies across the country, uh, of course with a number uh, about three outside the country. We are in the US, we are in, the Roma in Romania, we are in East Timor. So now, the church runs a media house called uh, Hope Media, where now I'm working and as a team leader of the institution and basically I'll tell you three things about uh, uh, Hope Media. 20 years back we established the radio station called Hope FM and then later on uh, some few years back, uh, about five years back, six years, uh, TV came on board. Uh, of course I've told you the slogan is that you look and live, listen and live. So basically we would just want to minister to the world, tell people uh, who Christ is, but also realize uh, even a Christian there are things that are, are go beyond Christ, uh, uh, be, beyond uh, can I call it uh, uh, Christianity that have an impact on your Christian life, and therefore we focus on holistic content. We will talk about relationships. We will talk about your business. We'll talk about uh, talent, like the show we had just recently. I mentioned the show called The Rough. Uh, when you look at our demographic on Geopol, of course, we address from uh, the young people to the old guys. We address uh, the low level class to the high class. But the focus, specifically, let me come down, is that number one, we seek to connect and engage. The vision that God gave me when I, I joined here last year, uh, we must intentionally connect and engage with our audience. The CEO of Hop Media himself, being born and raised in an ordinary world, a humble setting, knows better what the word luck is all about. I went to uh, the school, it's called Koyonzo Primary School, it's one of uh, schools in that area, that is in Kakamega County, where I went to primary school, partly changed to another primary school called Nganiro. Then later again went to do my class uh, 6, 7, and 8. It was around when my father passed on in 1993. <coughs> uh, had a bit of struggle in uh, primary. I think primary is significant for me because uh, that's the time I lost my dad, uh, who was the breadwinner. But unfortunately, again, my mom was not educated. And therefore, raising some of the very basic things that are required for a child to go to school in terms of just uniform, some 20, 30 things for activity, was quite difficult. Then I saw my mom struggle with us in primary school, uh, getting some mboga, uh, go to the market sell, some popo, go sell. I did my class 8, didn't perform quite well. I had to repeat it. Later I was called in a high school in Western called Musingu Boys. Uh, again, for me it was a formation, a formation in a way that uh, uh, I began to experience the real uh, um, responsibilities single mothers go through. Because now when I entered into high school, that was uh, in early 90s, eh? uh, of course now it was my mom. It was one of the big schools there. And definitely you meet a number of people from different backgrounds. People were able, middle class, high class, from big families. Uh, so when I went there, for me it was an exposure to begin to realize, oh, there are people who, uh, who, who are different. Different in language, the way they behave, treat each other. Uh, different in resources. I can particularly recall two instances in high school. One is when uh, we had a visiting day for parents. 
and therefore uh, the meeting was again about nine. So parents begin coming in, people driving, others coming with uh, in families, and it went on up to eleven. I had not seen anybody. Yet did I know that uh, my mom was on the way coming, but she didn't have enough money, so she had to walk part of the journey uh, to ensure that she she arrives. That's about. Uh, uh, from my home area to the school, that would be about 70 kilometers, about 70 kilometers, and therefore part of the journey, she had to show that she's able to walk, so that she's able to save some money to allow her go and come back. So she appeared, of course the rest of the parents will carry uh, uh, shopping, that time we had a big spy like, like Nakumat, uh, we had Uchumi, so you will see quite a number of them, but I, my, 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 my mom appeared with a paperback. Uh, then we had uh, a black paperback. So inside there, I, I was so excited, of course, she was carrying something. Uh, so for her, she went for natural things. She would, she would get off her guard at home, uh, make some duma and viazi. And because she was using matatu, you find that uh, because of the pressure in matatu, some of those things are really pressed together. But that's the gift that mom uh, was bringing. So that's one particular thing that uh, steered me up, uh, that I needed to do something. Uh, just to allow my mom feel that her effort were not fr uh, fruitless. After losing his dad, who was the only breadwinner, this must narrate to me his experiences and hardships that he had to go through while telling us how this shaped his personality to this date. I believe today when I look back that every season you go through is a training ground. There is no wasted years in somebody's life. In my years, uh, when I took care of animals then, probably God was helping me to take care of people in my late years. Uh, ensuring that, that, that these animals are taken care of, they feed well, that they are cared for. For me, it was a preparation then. But my life in high school, again, God was uh, teaching me uh, dependability that uh, one, you need people around you, you need a system. Uh, if I didn't have a system around me, probably I would not have made it in high school. So that today again tells me that even today, for me to succeed as a leader or as a person, you need a support system, you need some people around you to be able to, you can succeed alone. Uh, but more imp importantly, is that sometimes where, where people are not able, then God can surprise you. I've mentioned to you where God surprised me uh, when I was about to do my exam. God can surprise you anytime. So some of those lessons that I've picked from there, uh, having finished uh, from four, went to do a watchman job, uh, riding a motorbike for about nine kilometers from my place I used to to, to do guarding at Mumia Sugar at night, that's night guarding. And you're out there, young person uh, in early 20s, you are taking care of a, a yard where they do treatment for, for seed cane. A lot of mosquito, and you get into that place at six, uh, up to morning, and doing that for three months. For me, it was a training ground. But what's important again is that sometimes some of those things that you did the in the past, they don't sometimes necessarily define who you will become in the future. A hero's journey entails a lot that ordinary people and other heroes can learn from and there's always a beginning point. There was an advert in one of the media houses in the country, uh, that's before graduation. They said they wanted a salesman. But you must have a driving license. Myself, I've never sat close to a driver, leave alone driving. Because Matatu will sit behind. Now, they want, a, they want a driver, and this guy has never sat close to a driver's seat. But I applied anyway uh, for that. So then, like enough, I was called. Please note, I had not graduated. 
So they called us in this uh, December. We went to one of the tall buildings in town, it's I&M, for the interview. Now, I was intimidated when I reached there. Because we had, had to find out, is there anybody who doesn't have a driving license? The guys had old driving licenses, used and reused and renewed. I had none. <laughs> I had no driving license. I knew this one is gone. So then we went, we went in, uh, the guy went in, uh, guys who have experience. Uh, I've graduated last year, I'm working here, I want to change a job. Me, I'm just from, uh, uh, from, from campus, I was called, I was, just, I was attending um, a conference organized by Focus eh, in Kabarak. So called, came to Nairobi, uh, struggled to get to where the interview was. Uh, of course, some borrowed clothes from my brother, not fitting well. Uh, here I was to do the interview. I don't know what happened. They never asked for a driving license. And that's how I landed my first job as a salesperson uh, before graduation without a driving license. Uh, and then I was told, please go. Uh, I think they, they, I was so confident, I assumed I know how to drive. So I was told, please report to South Nyanza. The town was Kisi. You'll be coming to pick your car. In a, in, a, in a short while. So I went to the market, uh, got a house, I was single then, I was not married, so got a house, uh, began working, it was a tedious job, you have to wake up early dealing with uh, uh, people who are a bit rowdy. That was in the newspaper business. Uh, so just making care that vendors get their their papers, they're able to sell, the targets are made, I'm supporting the distributor. Now, after two weeks, they called me. Now, come for your car. I have just enrolled at AA in Kisi. I have no idea how to drive a vehicle. Do you just sit in a class for introduction, then you are called, please come. Now, it's either you say you don't know how to drive and lose your job, or come by faith. So I came to Nairobi. So the transport manager took me in the basement of IM Bank. It's on Kenyatta Avenue. Third, second, third basement. I was told that is your car. The car was K eighty three sixteen. The mileage was fifty nine. It was a local assembly uh, Nissan. Uh, we used to have Nissans that are assembled locally. So he told me, please get in the vehicle so I hey I got into the vehicle getting out of I&M is a steep so you have to find this out was a manual car so you have you have to balance as you move out it's a manual car of course the car is parked on a on a handbrake you do not know where the handbrake is and you have to balance you have read just a few notes during the first class at AA in Kisi so I got into the car and I told uh, myself, this is between you and God. You have gone through interview, you have earned a salary, uh, I think the first month, but now you are here, I go to lose the job. So, engine on, <clears throat> I did not change the gear. It was all, I think, on number one. I did not remove the handbrake and I drove off the car off, off uh, the basement. When I got to the street, I didn't know where to go. Because Nairobi looked quite different. The only respect I had is that it was a new car, quite late uh, car number plate, and it was branded. And therefore people, otherwise I would have uh, been uh, arrested. That day. So I went through the roundabout of the university, way, university of Nairobi, got up at a station around uh, Westland, got inside there. Uh, the car is smelling uh, because of a handbrake. Now I told them, uh, man, I, my life has been saved. Help me now how to... I, he said, handbrake is... Please pull it down. You're driving on gear number one. You have to move it. So the attendant gave me fuel. I was given a card to fuel, fuel there. Uh, he told me a few things, uh, so then I called uh, my in-law, it's called Chris Mapesa, I said I can't make it alone, please come. 
he didn't know how to drive but I needed some company because the distance was long from Nairobi to Kisi about 400 kilometers so I reached Kisi from Nairobi without an accident and again I can tell you that is God that is God that uh, I think must have allowed me to go through that process. It, 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 was, it was a learning the hard way. Go around a I didn't I didn't use that car for two days because uh, I it was it was a nightmare. So then that's how I began my job uh, in charge of that market. I got used to the car. That's how I learned my expertise and began just to work. I became a professional driver, but also a, a very efficient salesperson because of how I, I did that. Then I worked there for a number of years, then later Joe went out of the institution. I did another interview in a sugar factory, there where I worked there as a salesperson, I grew up to a level of a head of sales. Again, one profound thing I remember in uh, in my career at uh, uh, this sugar factory, this is uh, Sony Sugar, is the growth that God brought. Because came in as a salesperson, later thought to go open a branch in Kisumu, and then now uh, promoted back to head of head of uh, head of sales. I encountered a person whom I think shaped my life. And that's why I tell you, Kate, in life, uh, God brings people in your ways who train you and make you who you become. Uh, people sharpen people. My boss was a lady. She's called uh, Jane Pamela. Uh, so Jane Pamela was a no-nonsense woman uh, who was uh, then head of sales and marketing. So I worked under her and the lady sharpened my skills. I uh, had now begun not to sit, sometimes asked to come and uh, give some answers at the board level. Uh, sometimes the MD could reach you directly. Uh, so I began to now go into management uh, when I was uh, at, uh, at uh, Sony Sugar. Then I was recalled back to where I used to work uh, at a higher level in Nairobi. Then I worked for some time again. I got another job again, another sugar factory again. I left as a head of sales and marketing. That was in uh, Nzoya Sugar. Um, uh, so while I was there again, I, I was called back to work in uh, the same institution that is uh, Standard Media Group. Can uh, I now let you know? So uh, that was the, the, I think the third, second time I was going back to Standard. Work there for some time now. That time I was in management in terms of, but while I was at, um, at uh, Sony Sugar, I was enrolled to do my master's. Quite difficult to balance between work and doing my master's at uh, still the University of uh, at Kenyatta University. Uh, so after I finished uh, my master's, then I was transferred. So I ended up in uh, Mombasa Road, uh, Standard Group Center where I was almost in charge of uh, almost the whole country, except Nairobi, uh, handling uh, their circulation commercial. We used to call them regional manager uh, up country. And therefore, we were two. One will handle Nairobi, but me, I will handle uh, the rest of the country uh, in terms of just managing their revenue. A position I, I am truly grateful to. First of all, to the media house, but also to God, because I got a lot of learning. You begin to take care of uh, a number of needs of the institution, but also being in charge of people at uh, Standard Media Group. Um, a short while I left, and uh, I, was I was called to work at, uh, at now. That was uh, my last employer before I came here. That was at uh, National Media Group. I get in charge of... Uh, Country markets, first of all, Nairobi market. Acted a bit in a role of a general manager. Um, worked for Nairobi, and then did up country. Yeah, those are snip few of my, some of our. Now, last year in in in, um, in April is when I joined uh, where I am today. The middle of a heroic journey is filled with trials 
allies and enemies. In this past, a father of three girls tells us challenges he has gone through. Leading people is difficult. Uh, leadership and service is not an easy role. It's not for the faint-hearted. Uh, again, when you go back to the Bible, Christ himself was rejected at home. So when you're leading and serving, expect resistance. And it's not new. Just know that uh, you're not the first one to be in this uh, aspect. Uh, so you, you find where people do not understand your goal and your vision. Uh, you meet average people who do not want to take an extra mileage. Uh, so you have to show that you find a balance between the weaker and the stronger. Uh, make them feel part of the process. Inclusivity is a challenge when you are serving. Uh, how do you measure performance again? when you are serving is, is, is part of the challenge that your objective in terms of assessment, decision making, performance evaluation. Um, when you're serving resources can be limited because you need resources to be able to make an impact and therefore you have to have a creative mind but also trust in God. Our hero Dismas reveals to me the secrets behind his successful life and why every institution gets enough of him. It's good to be consistent. You must at some time be predictable. Uh, so that if they tell you Kate, come and do the assignment, they know that Kate will carry this laptop to this place within an hour. Kate will be available to do this job. My family about two decades that uh, I've been in that family. You're, you're imagining the number, number of years uh, <laughs> is uh, my firstborn is in Form 2. Yeah, so family has, has, has ensured that uh, one, if things are not working, I'm able to have a place to go to. People who understand me, do not judge me, uh, the energy to wake up in the morning, I have some girls that must go to school, must feed, and therefore every morning a wife who welcome you back home, even when you, when the world thinks you don't fit it, the family believes you are the person. But the very last and critical one is knowing that uh, you are accountable to God and not men. Because you can hide from men, but you cannot hide from God. Being able to reflect back and seeing, you mean I'm the one who did this? That keeps me going. Having a few people celebrate you. Uh, people who recognize that uh, you have a talent, you have ability. In life, you need a few of those people who believe that you can do the job. Hard work, discipline, having a purpose in life is what motivates him, knowing that his assignment was created way before he was created. I see myself leading one of the most successful media houses, not in Kenya, but in, in the globe. I, I, I still believe that media has an influence. And whatever direction it goes, I want to be part of that direction. And therefore, if not leading, I want to be part of that team. That we can say we have a media house with a difference. I think that's a desire I have. And hope it may be 10 years if I will be alive. Uh, and God allows. Uh, two, if we not be here, probably running an enterprise that has an influence. For me, I think it's about just influencing people. In his final remarks, this is what he had to say. I'm really uh, grateful to God <coughs> for the privilege to serve. Uh, in all those positions, I think you have known, uh, you have realized I was not among the best. But God qualifies you to be the best. So for me, first of all, is to allow Go to allow me to operate from a point of humility that this is an assignment that has been given to me 
it has to do with him and not me. Uh, I think thanking my wife was significant, of course, true. Uh, my wife, Benina, uh, who has been there for this man. When I show you my pictures when I was, I was getting married, I was a very, I was a very slender young man. <coughs> but he has ensured that uh, uh, he's provided the peace and the environment for a family to thrive. I think for me is to thank uh, my wife Penina, my daughter Faith. Uh, we have uh, Zawadi and we have uh, the anchor of the house called Anapis. Uh, she's in the middle but she everything rotates around her. If she's sick, everybody's sick. If she's alive, everybody's alive. We always have something like that in our family. Yeah, so Anapis, of course, is my daughter. My extended nuclear family brothers, I uh, have quite a number of them who truly love me and uh, I'm sure when I made a call today they will be able to be here. Friends, uh, high school, campus, uh, who have also been there. This institution I'm working for, being able to give my privilege to work for Hope Media. Uh, had a discussion when I was coming in with the uh, Bishop of Christ's other ministry. Reverend Calisto Dede, uh, who is my boss, and uh, he's, a, he's a truly man of faith. I've known him for about 20, uh, about uh, when I was camper from 2000. How many are those? He have known for 22 years. He is a man who has been consistent. Finding a man consistent for 22 years, uh, Kate, is not an easy job. Yes, I think him he has been consistent, and, and it, it's, it's an honor just to serve under him. Uh, given us room to work, uh, carrying the vision of the ministry, it's a privilege. Truly, we can always, those kind of leaders we have in, in, in our midst, uh, it's God who can give them the grace to carry the way they carry. Um, my colleagues, of course, here at uh, Hope Media, who have allowed me uh, to lead them and who make an impact every day, who make Hope Media be on air every single day. Uh, for me, I truly want to thank each member of uh, this institution, Hope Media.